There's nothing like a bribe to keep your campaign alive. President Biden fast-tracking a plan that wipes out another $1.2 billion in student loans for 150,000 borrowers. Biden pushing up his timeline as his family, excuse me, as his latest Hail Mary to young voters who've been left disappointed by his presidency. Altogether, Biden has now canceled $138 billion in debt for nearly 4 million borrowers. Do the math on that. The president bragging about it while attacking Republicans. My MAGA Republican friends in the Congress, elected officials and special interests stepped in and sued us, and the Supreme Court blocked it. It blocked it. But that didn't stop me. I announced we were going to pursue alternative paths for student debt relief uh, for as many borrowers as possible. This plan is the most generous repayment program ever, and today we're doing it even faster and quicker than ever before. You ordered this to get shut down in court. I don't have a worry at all. The president also will blast out an email to those lucky student loan borrowers as a way to kindly remind them who they need to thank at the ballot box this November. And if that's not transparent enough, Biden posting video of himself eating with a family that benefited from the student debt bailout. Taking care of two sons, uh, student loan was just something that was just an albatross and trying to take care of. And when that erasure happened, uh, it was such a tremendous relief for the, for the home. So thank you for that. I tried to wipe out all student debt. And the Republican Party went nuts. But is there a better way to solve all of this? A GOP-backed bill called the College Cost Reduction Act would make universities at least partially on the hook for those student loans Biden wants to forgive, with the legislation being billed as a risk-sharing proposal. Now, where have I heard that idea before? Let's say Joe Biden had come up with a with a plan that actually split the burden. All right. Let's say you're, you pay 250 bucks a month on your college loan. Right. The recipient for a while pays 100. Government pays 50. The bank pays 50. The school pays 50. How easy it is share, you know, share the relief. Greg, let's give you the floor. Oh, who is well that done. gorgeous guy? Huh? Amazing. You should be on this show. Uh, if you don't, if you let him get away with this. We will continue paying and we'll keep paying because there's no incentive to stop this theft. And that's what this is, theft. This bill makes the colleges responsible if the graduates don't get enough value out of their degrees. So that introduces value and accountability. Uh, it could kill all pointless degrees and you could see academia finally caring about, I don't know, useful, affordable education. If you don't do this, this is never gonna stop. And the fact that he just openly brags about this theft it's comical because it is a bribe. And it's, it's basically saying, because you know we brought up MAGA Republicans. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is, you know those people you can't stand, truck drivers, cops, construction workers? They're all probably extreme MAGA. So we're going to take their money mm -hmm. and use it to pay off your crippling loan that amounts to 250 bucks a month, basically, right? So that's what he's, he's, he's assuming that he's taking it from those people. I would use this argument. I would say the students. How would you feel as a graduate of Columbia or Harvard? We take your cash to pay off the truck loans, which yeah. is roughly the same monthly fee, for the blue collar folks who bring you your organic blueberries from Whole Foods or deliver your extra plush doggy bed from Amazon. Make it a trade. You know, the truckers pay for your useless degree and you pay for their useful work. This is unconstitutional, it's arbitrary. It's morally, it's kind of, it's morally wrong, uh, but you know what, it's, uh, he's going to do it anyway. He, he said that the Republicans are the ones that reposed it, but Judge, the Supreme Court said he wasn't allowed to do it, and even Nancy Pelosi agreed. That, that is a very good point. Nancy Pelosi did agree, and the Supreme Court said, Joe, you're exceeding your authority. You do not have the right to cancel out student debt. And, you know, the Supreme Court blocked it, and I love this bill. I love this College Cost Reduction Act. So if you go to college and you can't get a job based on the college education, well, then maybe the college should pay for 
the bill, <laughs> not the government. Why are we funding it? And you know what? The whole idea of cost-benefit analysis that you always refer to, Dana, the guy who buys the F-150, mm -hmm. who makes the cost-benefit analysis and says, I can't, I can't afford to go to college. I gotta, I gotta buy a truck. I gotta get to work right away. And th there is no punishment for people who don't do that. And these namby-pamby kids, they're saying, oh, I'm not gonna have that $200 a month, 200 extra dollars to be able to live the life I want to live. And in the end, when the Supreme Court has told them you can't do it, and the first case that went to the Supreme Court, they didn't have standing, but then they did have standing. They got this said, the right states that were involved. Um, it's clear he doesn't have the right. You talk about the morally wrong. This is a bribe. This is a bribe that Biden is trying to get young people with whom he has very low numbers in spite of the fact that he's, you know, pro-environment and, and uh, pro-choice. They think he's, you know, doesn't speak well. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> when the polls are bad, the Biden team finds some, like, sugar high to figure yeah. out a way to get through the next news cycle. And you can bet you're going to hear this at the State of the Union, right, on March 7th. Um, but what I think is interesting, Harold, it's like they treat the government like Oprah's favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> you get an electric vehicle and you get a solar panel and you get a student loan debt. In the meantime, they're shrinking their former coalition of blue collar workers with decisions like this. So it's good to be back around the table. Yes. Um, I've said for a while, first of all, I give Greg a lot of credit because Thank he talked. Yes. I think you talk about you have to talk about this <laughs> in three ways and they're all equal. The third way we always talked about this was you got to bring these college presidents before Congress and begin this conversation. I love the value and accountability. That's what the act should be called. Uh, and you, you, you give relief to kids, the second prong of what I always thought is you give relief to kids who want to be nurses and teachers and policemen and firemen and engineers like plumbers and electricians where we have a need in the economy. If you want to be a liberal arts major or even an art history major and be a plumber, that's fair enough. I, that's fine. I don't, I don't, I'd love to have a, a conversation about uh, World War One and World War Two with my plumber or, or like Roman when they're, when they're aqueducts, uh, all of that. So I just think that's that's where the focus uh, needs to be, and unfortunately, uh, is not. The third thing is when you look at some of the people. I, I looked at this. I know we all did. Some of the people who are getting some of this break from the president. These are people who've been paying, had a twelve or thirteen thousand dollar loan, have been paying for many years, and probably had paid interest above and beyond what what the original loan they took out. That being said, the court was right to do what they did. They did not have the authority to retire that level of debt. And Nancy Pelosi and Republicans and a, 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 a court that is dominated by conservative appointees were right. And maybe the president thinks if Democrats get to the majority, they'll, they'll be able to pass something like this. But I would argue Democrats don't retire everyone's debt. Let's re prioritize how we're going to do this. We have too much debt as a nation. But giving people a break who are trying to make the nation better and more whole, and for that matter, fix things and build things, they're the ones who deserve the break. Charlie, do you remember when Democrats absolutely lost their minds? And I didn't love it either. When President Trump wanted to put his name on the checks during oh, whatever yeah. the stimulus thing and they oh, yeah. lost their minds. Biden is out there doing big campaign announcements, blaming when, when the, t the money's coming from the taxpayers, it's not coming from Biden's back pocket. Yeah, everything that drives people crazy about Donald Trump is just because he does it better than politicians do, and he, and he owns it, he does it himself, and it drives people crazy. Yeah, the biggest lie about all this is the idea that you're canceling loans or canceling debt. There's no canceling of loans. You're just moving them from the people that benefited from the loans to innocent people who, you know, mom and dads maybe who couldn't afford to pay a tuition <coughs> for their own children are suddenly on the hook for yeah. paying for the tuition for other people to get like underwater basket weaving or gender studies, whatever, th b degrees from these massive corporations that have these massive untaxed en endowments. It is, I, I, I applaud the Republicans for, for doing this, but this is an issue that has been sitting around for a very long time yep. that uh, Republicans could have capitalized on. And it's, it's, it, it is right in, the, it should be right mm. in their, their wheelhouse because it is a massive, you know, the, the, who's the biggest actor in college loans? It's these massive universities. Right. They're the ones that set the rates. They're the ones that make, make, a, make money whether you uh, default on your loans or not default on your loans or whether you get a job because of your degree or don't get a job. They, they benefit coming and going every single time. And uh, they don't get a haircut in this. And Republicans, and I would love to see Donald Trump, Donald Trump could seize this issue and drive it all the way home. And, and whether you do it in a more uh, egalitarian way, where you do it for truck drivers, as well as the underwater transgender basket weaving degree or whatever, you know, 
it would. Uh, but I think I think they could they could make a tremendous. Political issue. Is that a four year degree to basketball? I think it is. I, I, it's only I the underwater. Two, so <laughs> under, like, if you, you add underwater, <laughs> then that adds stupid, another though. year. The other thing, I, I just want to make one quick point about this is that at the same time that all of this is going on, the Biden administration at the Education Department redid the financial aid website. And they said it's going to work so much better. Remember the Obamacare website? Yes. It's of course. been such a disaster that families all across this country who need to figure out a way to send their kids to school next year who are trying to apply for financial aid cannot do so. And now they have all of their friends who are getting accepted to schools who maybe don't need financial aid, and they can't make decisions until probably May 1st. And some families are saying, fine, then we'll, I guess we'll just do a gap year. I guess you'll have to work. And these kids, they were already in COVID school four years ago, and now they're in this situation. The Biden administration hasn't taken it on the chin enough for that, but they should. Mm. And you'll see more of that, Thank I'm sure. Come Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.